guys want to keep me in your thoughts. Um, nothing's wrong with me, I just want you to think about me. This is the story of Shandell Harris, a 30-year-old mother who was viciously killed by her husband Carl Monty Watts Jr. at a North Miami Beach Jewish community center on April 4, 2022. Shandell was stabbed the previous day and then later gunned down by her dangerous husband in broad daylight, in front of her daughter, mother and friends at a Miami pool. Police would take a serious interest in the case when they realized that two Carl's previous exes had disappeared without traces never to be found again. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. Serving new details about a man accused of shooting and killing his wife at a Jewish community center in Northeast Miami Dade yesterday. Detective State this story will be taking us to Miami, Florida. Miami is a subtropical city located in the Sunshine State of Florida, between the Everglades and the Atlantic Ocean. Miami is known for its strong Cuban influence, warm weather, pristine beaches, and great diving sites. The city is also home to some famous teams and landmarks such as the Miami Heat, the iconic Miami Tower, and the beautiful Everglades National Park. Morning. Shandell Harris was born on July 15, 1991, in Miami, Florida. She was the daughter of Sharon and James Harris. She had two brothers, James Jr. and Aaron, and a sister, Shanice. She grew up in a loving and supportive family that encouraged her to pursue her passions and talents. Shandell was interested in politics and community service from a young age. She graduated from Miami Northwestern Senior High School in 2009, where she was a member of the student government and the debate team. She then attended Florida International University, where she majored in political science and minored in sociology. She graduated with honors in 2013. Shandell had aspirations of becoming a Miami-Dade commissioner and making a positive impact on the world with her ideas and actions. She was involved in various social and civic organizations, such as the NAACP, the Urban League, and the League of Women Voters. She also volunteered at local schools, churches, and shelters. God could have made me anything, anything in this world, and he made me a black woman. <laughs> that is it, that is the post. Shandell was a loving mother who adored her 12-year-old daughter, Shania. She had her daughter when she was 18 years old with her high school sweetheart, who later passed away in a car accident. She raised her daughter as a single parent, with the help of her family and friends. She wanted to give her daughter the best life possible and teach her everything she knew. Shandell Harris married Carl Monty Watts Jr. on February 14, 2021, after dating him for about a year. Who was interested first? Who said I love you first? Who's more protective? Who cleans more? Who eats the most? Who spends the most money? Who is most likely to start an argument? Who falls asleep first? Who is more annoying? Who loves the hardest? Carl was a 45-year-old man who worked as a truck driver and had an extensive criminal background. He had been arrested several times for charges such as robbery, battery, drug possession, and domestic violence. Shandell met Carl through a mutual friend who introduced them at a party. She was attracted to his charm and charisma, and he showered her with compliments and gifts. He said that he loved her and that he wanted to marry her. He also said that he had changed his ways and that he wanted to start a new life with her. Shandell fell in love with Carl and believed his words. She hoped that he was the one who would make her happy and support her dreams. She also hoped that he would be a good father figure for her daughter, who had lost her biological father. However, soon after they got married, Carl showed his true colors. He became abusive and controlling towards Shandell. He isolated her from her loved ones and tried to manipulate her with money and gifts. Humble yourself, baby. Be real with yourself. Be real with others. He also cheated on her with multiple women and fathered several children with them. Shandell tried to leave Carl several times, but he always threatened to harm her or himself if she did. He also claimed that he loved her and that he would change for her. Shandell was afraid of him and felt trapped in the relationship. According to witnesses and police reports, 
Shandell Harris went to the Michael and Russell Jewish Community Center on Sunday, April 4, 2022, with her daughter and her mother for her daughter's swimming lessons. Carl arrived at the center around 4.45 p.m., armed with a gun. He had stabbed Shandell the night before at their home in Miami Gardens, while they were fighting about his alleged infidelity. Shandell had reported the stabbing to Miami police and filed for divorce. Carl approached Shandell at the center's pool area and offered her money to drop the charges against him and to stay with him. He said that he loved her and that he wanted to work things out with her. Shandell refused his offer and asked him to leave. She said that she did not love him anymore and that she wanted to end their marriage. She said that he had hurt her too much and that she deserved better. Carl became angry and violent. He pulled out his gun and shot Shandell multiple times in front of her daughter, her mother, and dozens of other people at the crowded pool deck. He then fled the scene but was detained by private security guards at gunpoint. Shandell collapsed on the ground, bleeding profusely. Her mother screamed for help and tried to save her, but it was too late. Shandell was pronounced dead at the scene by the paramedics. The police arrived shortly after the shooting and cordoned off the area. They collected evidence and interviewed witnesses. They also reviewed the surveillance footage from the center and nearby businesses. They were able to identify Carl as the shooter and arrested him. The police also searched Carl's home and vehicle and found several items of interest, such as a bloody knife, a cell phone, a laptop, and a diary. They also found some photos and documents related to Trakita Scott, a missing woman who shared a child with Carl and who vanished in June 2014 after she met with Carl his ex-boyfriend and the father of her son. Carl changed his story to authorities several times when questioned about the disappearance of Trakita. Investigators discovered through phone records that he spoke to Trakita the day she vanished, and Carl was in Liberty City where her abandoned vehicle was found. The police contacted Vicki Simmons' family and informed them of Carl's arrest. Vicki was a woman who had dated Carl before he met Shandell and who was shot and killed in December 2009. Vicky's family said that Carl had been abusive towards Vicky as well and that they suspected he had something to do with her death. The police also contacted Shandell's family and informed them of Carl's arrest. They said that they were sorry for their loss and that they would do everything they could to bring justice for Shandell. They said that they had evidence that Carl had stabbed Shandell the night before the shooting. In North Miami Beach, Christian. Now at 11, a domestic dispute turns deadly tonight. A woman is dead and her husband is in custody. The violence unfolding at a Jewish community center in the middle of the day. Thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Alina Machado. Let's get right out to NBC6 reporter Cristian Benavides, who is at the scene in North Miami Beach. Cristian. Alina, Miami-Dade police processed the scene for hours. They do confirm it's a domestic incident, a husband who shot his wife dead. Police also confirming that the couple has a history of domestic violence. Images obtained by NBC6 show a man in handcuffs being escorted out of the Michael Ann Russell Jewish Community Center in North Miami Beach following a deadly shooting at the JCC Sunday afternoon. Miami-Dade police say a 45-year-old man killed his wife. He followed her and chased her down and shot her. Like a... Like a like an animal, like an animal, like he was doing hunting. Heartbroken family members identified the victim as 30-year-old Shandell Harris, who was at the community center for her daughter's swimming lessons. The victim's mother also accompanied them to the class, witnessing the shooting. The victim was at the pool deck in the pool area because was attending her daughter was attending swimming lessons, and that's why she was there. Um, the husband then showed up to the to the scene here and then shot her over at the pool deck. The first calls came in around two in the afternoon. Security at the JCC is very tight. Most of the time, just one way in and one way out. You also need an ID to get around the facility. So it would be difficult for anyone to just walk in, except that on Sunday, swimming lessons are open to the public. They're going to reassess and see what modifications uh, they can do, if any. Family members say Harris recently had a falling out with her husband, and police confirmed there was a history of domestic violence. Domestic violence kills. There's resources out there. You don't have to live that kind of life. Meantime, Harris's loved ones are left grappling with this tragedy. Everything was for her child and for her marriage. My cousin, she's humble. 
She's very quiet. She, she, she's a great mother. You know, she didn't deserve this. She didn't deserve it. After he was arrested, his past evil deeds started to come to light. The police also contacted Shandell's daughter and offered her counseling and support. They said that they would keep her updated on the case and protect her from any harm. Carl Watts has three previous kidnapping charges and was caught on surveillance video attempting to kidnap a high school student on May 1, 2014. He attempted to abduct the 18-year-old from a bus stop on Sunrise Boulevard. Investigators went to question Carl, but he disappeared. Serving new details about a man accused of shooting and killing his wife at a Jewish community center in Northeast Miami-Dade yesterday. Detectives say Carl Watts admitted to stabbing his wife the day before, and when she refused to drop those charges, he shot her. Carl Watts has a troubling past, and Fort Lauderdale police say he's a person of interest in the disappearance of another woman eight years ago. Local 10's Roy Ramos continues our live team coverage. Roy. Watts does have a violent criminal history that dates back to 1994 with charges that include kidnapping to grand theft to drug trafficking and the list goes on and on but the most recent charge that he is facing now murder good afternoon mr watts 45 year old carl watts jr faced a miami-dade county judge after police said he shot and killed his wife 30 year old chandel harris sunday so you were arrested for one count of second degree murder. Investigators said it all happened at the Jewish Community Center while Harris was at her daughter's swim lessons. He shot the victim multiple times. In the arrest report we obtained, it states Watts offered to pay Harris money to drop charges against him for stabbing her multiple times the day prior. When she refused to accept, he shot and killed her. While Watts now faces a second degree murder charge, which may change. To me, it looks like there's probable cause for first degree murder. We've learned he has a lengthy criminal history. You may remember when we told you how he was a person of interest when his girlfriend, Trukita Scott, disappeared in June of 2014. While he was never arrested in that case, she has never been found. In July that same year, Fort Lauderdale police arrested him for attempting to kidnap an 18-year-old girl at a bus stop. Fortunately, she got away. I found Watts' violent past dates back to 1994 with charges that include grand theft, armed robbery, drug trafficking and kidnapping. But it is this brutal murder of his own wife that could now have him spending the rest of his days behind bars. On April 5, 2022, Carl appeared in court for his arraignment. He said nothing as a judge read his charges and denied him bond. He was assigned a public defender who did not comment on his behalf. He pleaded not guilty to his charges and requested a jury trial. On April 30, 2022, Carl appeared in court for his trial. He was represented by his public defender, who argued that he acted in self-defense and that he was mentally ill. He presented some witnesses who testified that Watts had suffered from depression, anxiety, PTSD, and bipolar disorder. He also presented some evidence that showed that Carl had been abused by his father as a child and that he had been bullied at school. The prosecution was represented by the state attorney, who argued that Carl acted with premeditation and malice. He presented all the pieces of evidence that the police found. The jury deliberated for two hours before reaching a verdict. They found Carl guilty of second-degree murder and possession of a weapon by a convicted felon. They recommended a sentence of life in prison without parole. On May 15, 2022, Carl appeared in court for his sentencing. He said nothing as the judge read his sentence and ordered him to spend the rest of his life behind bars. He showed no emotion or remorse as he was escorted out of the courtroom. Shandell's family was devastated by the news and expressed their grief and anger. They said that Shandell was a good person who did not deserve to die. They also said that she loved her daughter and wanted to be a good mother. Shandell's daughter was traumatized by the incident and she said that she misses her mother and that she wants to make her proud. She said that she wants to follow in her mother's footsteps and become a politician someday. Our deepest condolence to the family of Shandell Harris. May Shandell's memory be a blessing for her family and for all who knew her, and may her life and death be an inspiration and a turning point towards justice and increased protection for domestic abuse survivors. Please stay safe out there and see you guys in the next video.